You just want to to step out of it, to step out of a, the, the, the whole race, the whole business. The, the monstrosity of being alive overwhelms you. If you have depression, if you have anxiety, if you have post-traumatic stress disorder, if you have any kind of mental health condition, this is not something to ignore. Depression, frustration, anxiety, pain, disillusion, it's just a natural part of the process of becoming a stronger version of yourself. The thing that keeps one living is a sense of future, that there will be a tomorrow, and tomorrow I've got to do this, and then the day after I've got to do that. Get started. And I'm going to tell you right now, it won't be easy. It will be hard, because life is hard. That's what life is. With depression, one of the most important things you can realize is that you're not alone. I've been places and someone has said, well, you lost an arm and a leg, so you have a right to be depressed. And I stopped you. I was like, depression is real. No matter what you're going through right now, it doesn't mean that it's not going to end. I think too often we think about the stresses that we're dealt with right now, and we think that there's no light at the end of the tunnel. All that you can see is darkness, and everything that you try to do just kicks you right back in the face, and you just can't seem to get yourself up. You don't, you don't even have to go through something traumatic. Some are caused by you know, something traumatic. Some can be a, a chemical imbalance in the brain. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Life is hard. Life is challenging. There are ups and downs. And these challenges, these challenges that you face, they're going to do their best to take you down. Do not let them. Of course you have to work. Of course you have to show up. Your team needs you. Life needs you. Your family needs you. Life is for the living. Depression is not only normal, it's essential and be grateful for it because it allows you to reorder yourself at a higher level. I speak what's on my heart. And I gave my speech and as I was closing, I kind of mentioned some depression. Because I was, I was coming out of the winter months and I, it hit me again this past winter and I went and saw the doctor. So it was on my mind and it came up. And as I was saying, I thought, this generation of people probably aren't connecting to what I'm saying. When I walked off the stage and they lined up, the amount of people that thanked me for talking about mental health. And here I was, I thought they didn't want to hear. I thought I was stepping out of line. No, it needs to be talked about because it's, it's not just this generation. It's people are realizing more and more that it's an issue. And the more we talk about it, the easier it is for people to be honest with themselves and get the help they need. Line up those problems and confront them, face them, fight them. Do not let them bring you down. Do not personally identify with your depression. See it as you see winter, and winter always leads to spring and summer again. See it as you see nighttime. Nighttime becomes daytime again. Hold on to that fundamental quality of faith. On the other side of your pain is something good. Suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. No matter what you're going through right now, it doesn't mean that it's not going to end. Stand up, dig in, let those challenges raise you up. Let them elevate you. Let their demands and their trials make you stronger. Adversity you face today turn you into a better person tomorrow. You are worth more than diamonds. All the diamonds in the world, you are so precious. Every single one of your heart, you can do something. Life is not always good. Life is always not rosy. But life is worth living. There's one thing, one thing, that if you did every single day, it would make an extraordinary difference in whatever mental health issue you're struggling with and that is exercise and the reason you've got to exercise every day is because what we know about human beings is that when you physically move your physiology changes and that changes your brain 
take the time to rest. Because just what if that resting is the key to world-class producing? Get outside and exercise every single day as if your life depends upon it. Because you know what? It does. Your brain needs it, your body needs it, your mental health needs it. And I feel like if you had heart problems and saw a cardiologist, well, everyone would be concerned about you, would know you're doing better, and it would be open and honest with the crew. But the most complicated organ in your body, if you have a problem with this, suddenly there's a, we don't want to talk about that? No, and you can get over it. And that's what people need to realize. You can be cured, you can get past it. I assure you, the clouds will lift. Right there is sunlight above the clouds. You're just looking at the clouds right now. And they will lift, and crisis has come to teach you the big lesson you're meant to learn to move to your next level in the next chapter of your greatest life. This depression will pass. It will go away, and something much better will take its place. But for right now, all that you really need to know is that you have to make it through. Getting your heart rate up, getting outside, breathing, feeling connected, getting out of your house, which may make you feel depressed and trapped. The man I am with you right now as I speak with as much authenticity as I know how to share is the result of my times in the Valley of Darkness. Doing that every day, that physical push, you don't have to run. You don't have to go to an aerobics class. Get outside with your dog in the woods. Walk with a good friend for two or three miles. Doing that every single day not only moves your body, which changes your mind, it gets you out of your physical environment, which is one of the things that people with depression tend to have a hard time doing. And it also creates a bit of momentum and a bit of a routine in your life. Every time I experience a bout of depression, I come out on the other end a different person doing different things, but it's because I'm aware of what's happening and I'm looking, I'm aware. I want to see the opportunities as they present themselves to me instead of falling into the depths of a spiral down depression because I'm personally identified with what is happening when I'm upset. And your schedule is not full and you actually feel like you're wasting your life because you're not this epic producer. What if those times were actually different form of productivity? What if those times were actually being productive in a different way? Where you're actually producing, not in the world, but producing within yourself. Producing strength, producing new insights, producing new ideas, producing new capabilities, producing new energies, producing new emotions, shifting from fear to love. Because when you go through difficult times, what do you really do if you feel your fear and your pain? You release it. It's out of your system and you grow in love and bravery and strength. What does that do to your craft? What does that do to your power? What does that do to your bravery? What does that do to the light that you bring into the world? You become this incredible force that is undefeatable. I suggest to you that if you are facing a challenge, don't stop. Stay busy, work your plan. Continue to do those things that you know that work for you after you have evaluated yourself in the situation. Continue to move, stay busy, stay busy, stay busy. You are part of a larger cosmos, whether you know it or not. And communing with nature allows you not to see the bars of the prison cell, but the stars of the universe. And if you can connect with those every day, my dear friend, you will use your pain as an instrument for your greatest growth. And then you try something new. And then you'll also go to school and people will put you down and parents will tell you that you're a failure because you failed at a test. And you start believing the lies around you, saying that you're not good enough and no one's going to want you and you'll never ever do anything good in your life and you'll never ever you know, achieve, the, achieve the dreams and goals that you wish you had done or wish that you could do. And these steps take you closer. That voice saying, you're not good enough. Step to fall. See, you have a choice to know which step you're going to take today. I want you to know that no matter where you are in life, no matter how low you have sunk, 
no matter how bleak your situation. This is not the end. This is not the end of your story. This is not the final chapter of your life. I know it may be hard right now, but if you just hang in there, stick it out, stay with me for a little while, you will find that this tough moment will pass. And if you are committed to using this pain, using it to build your character, finding a greater meaning for the pain, you will find that in time, you can turn your life around and help others going through the same struggles. The world right now is in the middle of a mental health crisis. It's estimated almost half the population suffers from depression at some stage throughout their life. Rather than join the queue, it's important we learn why we get down and then how we can change it. Because believe it or not, we create our own negative feelings and we can also ensure that we turn our lives around and be a positive change for others. The reason anyone gets depressed always comes down to the consistent thoughts we think and the consistent beliefs we hold. Let me say that again. The reason anyone gets depressed always comes down to the consistent thoughts we think and the consistent beliefs we hold. The point here is that anyone that is depressed is so because there is an external factor that didn't materialize in their life. They have lost something outside of their control or don't have something that is out of their control. In school, we are taught how to get a job, but no one teaches us how to live in a state of happiness. No one teaches us how important our conscious and unconscious thoughts and associations are. Is our happiness not worth more than a job? Yes, it is. And before you say happiness won't pay my bills, happiness will pay your bills. When you realize you will be 10 times more energized, focused, and take positive action in your life, when you first choose to develop yourself as a priority and then get to the stuff of the world. I've seen some people who many would consider to have it all in their life because they thought they were not good enough. A thought, a belief within them, told them they were not worthy. These people that many were jealous of, many envious of, were not good enough. You must value yourself enough to take the time every single day to work on you. To engage in something that will ensure you are a positive influence on the world. This of course doesn't mean life will suddenly be perfect. The same life challenges will show up. But if your mind is strong, if your mind is at peace, your reaction to the challenging times will be very different. Your reaction will be, how can I make this work? Not why is this happening to me? And then others will look to you, not with pity, but with hope. Because your strength will become their hope, their strength. You really can be that powerful. You can ditch the victim story. You can leave the pain behind and focus on how you will react next. How you will react positively. Read. Read all you can read to get your mind in a positive place. Take steps to ensure you will be in a better position next time. Whatever pain you are suffering from, how you can ensure it won't show again. Take little steps and soon you will be at the top of the staircase. Don't give up. You are worthy. You are more than worthy. You deserve to experience how great life can be and you owe it to the world to be that positive change for others, to inspire others who will look to you and say, he did it, she did it, and I can do it too.